Welcome back fellow creators to another exciting episode of our Unreal Engine Niagara series. In today's tutorial, we are diving into the fiery world of particle effects as we explore the creation of a mesmerizing fire thrower using the power of Niagara. Fire has always been a captivating element in visual storytelling and with the versatility of Niagara, we have the tools to unleash its full potential in our projects. Get ready to ignite your imagination as we delve into the intricacies of creating realistic fire simulations, dynamic motion and scorching visual effects. Whether you're an aspiring game developer, a visual effects artist, or simply a passionate learner, this tutorial is packed with valuable insights and techniques that will set your creativity ablaze. So let's venture into the fiery depths of Niagara and unlock the secrets of the fire thrower effect together. So first things first, let me just delete this existing Niagara system that I have in my project and let's start from scratch. I'm going to create a new folder and after that it's time to create a fire material. So let me just name it as M underline fire and let's double click. And as we did in the previous section, let's just change the blend mode to the additive and after that let's change the shading mode to all it. And then make sure to check this two-sided option and now it is time to import our texture and I have used this MS VFX volume 2 fire and flames of Niagara from the Unreal Engine's marketplace so simply add it to your projects and I'm going to use its texture let me just find its location I think it would be here and I am going to use this big flames texture for example and now I'm going to import a particle color node to my material editor window. So let me just search for it and here it is. Let me put it right here. And after that, let's combine it with a multiply node. And I'm going to combine the RGBs of the particle color and the texture and let's connect them to the emissive color. And let's do the same for the alpha channels and let's connect it to the opacity and here we have our material. So that was just piece of a cake and here we have our material and I'm going to explain you why we did that in the materials editor. So let's create a new Niagara system in the folder that we've created before. Let's continue and let's use this simple sprite burst and add it to our project. For example, NS underline fire would be a good name. And here we have our Niagara systems editor window. First thing to do is to change the material to M underline fire. And there you go. Now, let me just zoom a bit in the viewport so you would better see the result. We have kind of a pattern, an eight by eight pattern of the fire material. So we have this sub UV section here. So I'm going to set this sub UVs to eight by eight. And you can see that we have sort of divided that texture to eight. And as a result, we have just one fire texture. And after that, it is time to add a sub UV module to the particle update stage. And here it is. And after that, let's set the source to Sprite Renderer. And look at the viewport, we have kind of fire, but we need to make some corrections on it. And the next step is to define the number of frames that we want to have in the lifetime of one loop of this fire material. So for example, let's change the beginning frames from zero to five with a random float range and the ending frame to 128. So we would have kind of better qualities in each loop. And now it is time to change the processor from CPU to GPU as we did in the previous sessions. And now we are able to have numerous numbers of particles. And let me just double check this sub UV animation. And I think it would be better to change from linear to random. And from this emitter stage module, I'm going to change the loop behavior from once to infinite and let's delete this instantaneous and instead of that I'm going to add this spawn rate and let's change it from static to random float range and I'm going to set it from for example 300 to 500 would be okay and you can see the difference from viewport but we're far away from 
our desired result. So let's check this. Initialize particle and let's change the lifetime to random float range. And I'm going to set the minimum to something like 0 0.5 and the maximum to 0 0.8. And this would be the lifetime of each particle. And let's set the size of the particles again to random range float. And for example, minimum of 100 and maximum of 150 would be OK. And you can see the difference from the viewport. All right, now it is time to have the shape location module. So let's add it. It's right here. And I am going to decrease the radius of this sphere shape. And with that done, it is time to add another module called add velocity. We have used this module in previous sessions. So we are kind of familiar with that. Let me just set this Z axis to zero and I'm going to have this velocity in the X axis. And let's change this velocity mode to in cone. And as I did multiple times before, let's change from static to random range flow to have dynamic amounts for the speed. For example, 800 to 1200 would be perfect. Just look at the results in the viewport. We are now close to our desired fire thrower effect by Niagara, but still we need to tweak on some options like this cone angle and inner cone angle, for example, five and three would be better simulation on this fire thrower effect. So let's move on and let me just check these modules over here to see what we need. Yes. I think we need a scale sprite size. So let's add it to this stage over here. Let me just type and search for it. I think, yes, it's right here. Let's click on it. And here we have this module and I'm going to change its curve to this template over here and look at the results in the viewport. And now, thanks to this module, we have kind of a fire thrower, which is going out from an engine. And let's delete this scale color module. And instead of that, I am going to add a simple color module, just like that. And let's change its mode to color from curve. And I think you're familiar with this color defining process. For example, this orangish color would be perfect for this spot here. Let's change its location and I'm going to add another color spot. And this color spot going to be brighter than the previous one. Let me check the values. I think two was better. And there we have our fire thrower effect. Let's click on this compile button over here and add this Niagara system to our project. Let me close this window and then let's open the content browser, find the Niagara system, drag it to the scene and place it to an appropriate location. And that concludes our fiery journey into the realm of Unreal Engine Niagara and the creation of a mesmerizing fire thrower effect. We hope this tutorial has ignited your passion for pushing the boundaries of visual effects and unleashing your creativity. Remember, the power of Niagara lies in your hands, offering endless possibilities to bring your visions to life. Whether you're crafting a thrilling game, an immersive cinematic experience or a mind-blowing visual spectacle. Let the fire within your fuel your pursuit of greatness. Stay inspired, keep experimenting and continue to explore the vast possibilities that Unreal Engine and Niagara have to offer. Until next time, my fellow creators, keep pushing the limits and set the world ablaze with your extraordinary creations.